pleasure to be here. I'm a Midwesterner, even though I flew in from New York today. I, these are my roots in this area. Um, so many of you probably don't know about Maharam, so I want to start just by telling you a little bit um, about the company. It's a textile company that was started in 1902, and until about six months ago, uh, it was a fourth generation family-owned business, and then Stephen and Michael Maharam decided to sell the business to Herman Miller. So it is uh, still a very design-driven company. It will continue as a design-driven company, um, even with the new ownership. Um, with parents like Herman Miller, um, obviously they're very committed to, to good design. Um, the design at Maharam is always a collaborative effort, whether it's within the design studio or working with people on the outside. I think one of the great pleasures of working in the studio at Maharam is that there's no individual self-promotion. We work very harmoniously together as a team. And our studio life revolves around uh, this design table that you're seeing uh, from an overhead view, where we all work together on various projects. Um, we do have several collaborators, such as Hella Youngarius, uh, who tend to be from outside the textile industry. We purposely want people from outside our industry um, so that they can offer us a fresh perspective. Uh, I first met Hella about 14 or 15 years ago at the Aspen Design Conference, and after seeing her present so many of her designs and seeing how she transforms materials, I asked if she'd be interested in designing textiles for Maharam. Uh, she gave me a very measured response and said she'd only be interested to work with us if she could do something that had never been done before. Now, I thought that was a very astute kind of response. Most people just say, yes, they would love to, but Hella um, is very particular about what she does um, and very thoughtful about what she does. Um, so some of the objects that I had seen her present, and um, by the way, I was not totally familiar with what was going to be here, so there are some very nice um, um, fortuitous sort of similarities going on between my my slides and uh, my images and what's in the exhibit. Um, her soft urn from 1993 still remains one of my favorite objects. It's an archetypal um, form. Uh, she many times uses archetypal forms. She casts this in polyurethane and she explicitly shows the process exposing the casting seams and uh, even the bubbles in the, the urn itself. The pushed wash tub is one of my personal favorites. It was done in 1996 when she was with Droog Design, and her concept was why bump into a cold, hard sink in a bathroom when instead you can have a sink that will be flexible and sort of conform to your body. The red and white vases in porcelain from 1997 um, again, uh, the casting seams are celebrated. She uses a thumbprint as a signature, uh, and one of these was painted with Toyota red spray paint. The B set from 1997 was uh, made so that it was purposely not uniform, um, and it is mass produced, but what she did was she fired the porcelain at an unusually high temperature so that each piece is a bit distorted and different from the others. The Delft blue set, which is on display here, um, it's a translation of very traditional decoration um, into contemporary expression. The porcelain has been punctured, it's been uh, embroidered, uh, uh, printed with uh, almost pixelated images. Um, and it, you'll see that one piece has a handle attached uh, with a plastic rip tag. So our journey began, our textile journey began in Switzerland. Um, we visited the archives and actually mined the archives of, of a wonderful old mill. Um, and they had originally done a lot of silk um, tie fabric. And so they have these very detailed images, such as this from a jacquard point paper, um, which was used before everything became computerized. Um, and she found this and several other images that she wanted to combine into one textile. Um, we um, were a little bit hesitant. The mill was a little hesitant. We were like, how are you going to put all these different things together in one textile with an extremely large repeat? Um, but she really persisted, 
And in fact, it was something that, to the best of our knowledge, had never been done before. Um, so we ended up with a collection called Repeat, where she did, in fact, combine different patterns together. And she took it a step further, and she printed using some of the uh, nomenclature from the jacquard weaving um, and printed with a, a white lacquer uh, ink on the textile itself. The Repeat textiles, here you see it the entire length of, of um, the textile, where there are actually four different patterns combined into one. Um, you do see the pheasants flying here on one side. Um, but it's really about her theme of individuality within mass production. I mean, this is a common theme that I think has run through her work. And as she often does, uh, the patterns were repurposed for other application here on porcelain. So again, you see the pheasants and the vines and so on that were in the textile. We followed up a few years later with layers, which is a felted wool fabric. It's actually two layers of fabric that have been embroidered together and then uh, cut away by hand, as you can see. The top layer is cut away in areas to create the pattern. The textile collection uh, of layers is all landscape-based pattern work. Um, this is very reflective of her color work as well. I think one of the things about collaborating with someone is, especially on, <clears throat> excuse me, on color, is let them um, express their perspective on, uh, on color. If we start going back and forth and, and saying, well, I'd, rather, I'd like to have a blue in there, or I'd like to have a pink in there, whatever, then you end up with, a, I think, a very muddled um, collection. So we tend to let our collaborators do what they think is best. The Mahara Vitra polder sofa, I know you do have a polder sofa in the exhibit, um, designed by Hella. The name refers to a typical Dutch polder landscape. Um, each part of the sofa is upholstered in a different fabric. In this case, she has mixed patterns together in the uh, polder sofa in the exhibit. She has changed the colors of the fabrics a bit from one section to the next, changed the texture as well, uh, and the thickness. So again, it's, it's, for her, it's about an absence of perfection. Borders was our next fabric, another embroidered fabric. This time she was taking um, her references from narrow strips of textiles woven, if you, if you think, can think of like backstrap looms that are used in countries like Guatemala. And then um, the sections are woven together or embroidered together. So she was using that as her imagery um, in, de in developing borders. In 2010, she had a retrospective at the Boymans Museum in Rotterdam, and there were many things on display for the variety of com wide variety of companies she does work with, uh, Vitra, Nymphenburg, um, uh, Ikea. Um, one of my favorite things in the show was this uh, circle of different vases. Each vase was a slightly different color than the next. The glazes were all slightly different and they were all arranged in this very beautiful color circle. And it was rather ironic because her work is all about imperfection and there was an unfortunate accident. Um, after the opening of the show, a woman fainted and fell into the vases. And the woman was fine, um, but a number of the vases broke and Hella being Hella, of course, wanted to leave all the shards and all the broken pieces as they were and not have them removed. Um, unfortunately, the museum didn't like that idea. So in fact, they had all the, the new porcelain made uh, and put back into the exhibit. Uh, we took what I feel is her most iconic image, that of the vase, and transformed it from porcelain into a textile. This is a recent introduction that we've had. Um, we've been working together for, you know, 14 years now, and she never ceases to amaze me. Uh, her work is quite varied. Uh, she just um, finished, there was just the reopening of the UN, the United Nations Delegate Lounge in New York City that Hella was responsible for. Um, she's also working with KLM Airlines on the airplane interiors. So you can see that she really has a great um, variety of work. 
Sir Paul Smith, um, you know, one of the litmus tests for who we collaborate with is that we really have to like the person. And um, we really like Paul. He's a, he's a great guy. Um, he didn't have a clue about Meharam. Um, of course, we knew who he was, but um, the only way he found us was in an exhibit at the Design Museum in London. There was an exhibit on Gioponti, and we had a textile in the exhibit that was called, is called Imorosi alla Fenestra, or the Lovers of, at the Window. Um, and he was so taken by it that he tracked down Michael Meharam, called him to ask if he could buy some of the fabric to use as coat lining for his uh, menswear and, or womenswear, whatever. Um, so, of course, we happily sold him some of the fabric, but we thought, you know, here's this man who does these beautiful stripes on everything, and why not try and do something with him? So the very first project we did, I think is still my very favorite one with him, uh, called Bespoke Stripe, where we took the reference of men's suiting and took a chalk stripe um, and then uh, planted these irregular stripes along the width of the fabric. Uh, and very serendipitous that the fabric works so well on the Oxford chair by Fritz Hansen. Um, their process is to do wrappings of different yarn colors um, to see, you know, the thickness, the color uh, relationship, and so on. Um, in this case, the wrappings were done on a herringbone suiting fabric, and uh, voila, we ended up with herringbone stripe. Uh, again, a menswear kind of reference, and uh, in typical men's suiting colors for the background. Of course, the accents are quite bright. Um, but that is something about Paul Smith. There's always that little edge, that little, you know, what you want to call it, quirkiness or sense of humor, whatever, that I think that's one of the things that he's known for. We went on and did uh, satin weave stripes. These were done with a worsted wool yarn. Um, and uh, we then changed it up a little bit and did a different construction, a different woven construction. Um, this is an epinglay, a cut and uncut epinglay in a cotton. Uh, we then went on to plaid, and this is called exaggerated plaid, done in a woolen spun yarn um, at a very fine mill in Scotland. One of the fun things about working on all these different textiles with people as you go to so many different places to get something done. You go to the place where they do it best and certainly Scotland does plaids best. Point uh, looks almost like a grow point construction. Uh, different yarns take and, and fibers take color differently so we ended up with a, a very vivid collection in this case. And our most recent introduction is Big Stripe. Um, and you can see it uh, on the Wegner shell chairs uh, in the reception area of our offices in New York City. Now you can chop it up as you like and let the stripes fall wherever they end up falling. But in this case, we did a little pre-planning for the upholster because we wanted the stripes to end up uh, each chair. Actually, there are four chairs. We wanted each chair to be a bit different. Studio Yob. Uh, Yob and Ninka are both graduates of Eindhoven. Uh, they founded Studio, Studio Yob in 2000. They're now Mr. and Mrs. Smeets. Um, they are definitely not coming from modernism, um, but I think positioning decorative arts in the 21st century. Um, the farm installation done in 2008 uh, is approximately 30 different objects of polished brass, bronze, rosewood, leather, um, all referring to rustic farm life of old. Um, installations were somewhat in, unusual in the design world back then, but very commonplace in the art world. Um, personally, I think that they were, you know, sort of staking out their territory at that point. James probably knows a lot better than I do um, how this all um, looks to the, the design world. Um, their work tends to be extremely well uh, crafted. Um, this happens to be a screen called Bavaria uh, from the Bavaria collection of five items, uh, rosewood furniture that are inlaid with marquetry. Um, these are inspired by hand-painted furniture of 17th and 18th century Bavaria. And we've done Bavaria as a textile, uh, which presented its own challenges. It's unusual to have this detailed a textile with this many different colors. 
Um, and for something like this, we ended up going to a very fine mill in Germany where they uh, also appreciate craftsmanship and could pull off something like this. And we did it as a stripe. Ruins is an axonometric view of post-World War II Dresden and as a textile called Aftermath. Now, the subject matter is a bit dark. I, I completely agree. Um, but you will probably appreciate the fact that Studio Yob uh, likes a little controversy. This is it upholstered in their home, um, which is a very, very perfectly restored modernist villa in the Netherlands. And the last of theirs is a new introduction called Industry, where bits and pieces of different things from the industrial world are put together in a textile. So they definitely represent a different perspective. Konstantin Gurchic, who I think of as the industrial designer's industrial designer, uh, is a Munich-based designer. Um, he researches emerging technologies. He's exactly the opposite of Studio Yob in many respects. He's not interested in creating one-offs. And as he says, he's not interested, uh, excuse me, he prefers the constraints that are imposed by industry. And this is a quote from him. The designer doesn't need entertainment. He enjoys serious tasks. Now, if you look at the picture of Constantine and you hear that, you can appreciate that that goes together. He feels very committed to um, uh, responding to genuine needs. Um, he's done work for many companies. Uh, again, this is rather, um, Fortuitous. I didn't know that you were using this image um, in your publicity, and this is one of my favorite pieces of Constantine's. I think it's pretty genius that he did this um, cement-based chair for the outdoors for public use. Um, it is um, part of his Chair One series that he did for Magis, uh, and it's die-cast aluminum and concrete, as I said. He does work for Vitra, he does work for Muji, he has had a long-standing relationship with Krupps. Um, a lot of very beautiful work. His May Day Light, which is also in the exhibition, uh, which he did for Floss. Um, to me, his, his work is about simplicity. Uh, the Tom and Jerry stools, again for Magis, which are a redesign of a classic workshop stool in beach and plastic. Um, we thought that he would be the right person to go into the factories that we work with for non-woven upholstery. Um, since he's so tied to material use, um, we thought it would be good for him to study these different manufacturing processes and see what he could come up with that would be different for our industry. Um, he came back with, after going to some of these, he came back with a book that was about two inches thick that he developed for us. Um, so here is serious Constantine's work, um, looking at many different ways to approach the problem. And I won't go into detail on all these, but uh, here he borrowed from uh, some things that he was working on with Adidas, with the power web. and his pattern exploration uh, across the floor of his studio in Munich. It's a very beautiful patterns that were developed um, and his references for those. And then he went so far as to just do some rough simulations of the patterns on a chair form so we could see how they would end up looking. This is um, the first item that we, the first product we introduced from him. Um, it's a deeply embossed vinyl where there are peaks and valleys and then the peaks are printed with an accent color. Uh, drape, which is a faux drape pattern again uh, in vinyl. His sense of color I think is very specific and it actually reminds me a little bit of what Dieter Rams did for Braun. Uh, in the end, uh, I just want to say that this to me is kind of showing the collaborative effort at Meharam, both the, the internal design staff and the people that we've worked with. Um, there's a richness that's offered by working with a variety of people um, and there's a, a wonderful diversity. Um, we are not out shopping for collaborators. Um, we, we are very committed to the people we're already working with. Although I will say on the far left of the screen, there's a block textile, large blocks of color. 
And that is from um, Schulten and Bangs, uh, an Amsterdam-based team uh, who we've just started working with, and you'll be hearing more about them in the future. Um, but at any rate, that's, um, that's a little bit about Maharam. So thank you very much.